Welcome back. Now, online gaming is rapidly making the running in South Africa's 800 billion gambling market. This as the traditional casino model battles to get itself off a state of complacency. The online gaming sector has posted a gambling market share of 50.3% compared with 36.8% for the casino sector. Editor for the Financial Mail, Mark Hassenfuss, joins us now to look into the rise in trends of online gaming. Mark, a pleasure. Good afternoon. Nice to be here. Wonderful, Mark. And let's chat about just the changing uh, landscape here with uh, gambling. Initially, you couldn't go to too, you couldn't go, go to too many places uh, besides the casino uh, to get your uh, gambling on. But of course, that's changed quite a bit. Yeah, look, it has changed over the years. Obviously, back in the day, we had Sun City only. Um, that all changed with the onset of the urban casinos and casinos quite frankly in some very small little places as well scattered all around south africa um but yes that has changed with first thing we saw look we've always had horse racing let's be honest mm -hmm. that's been around for yonks um but then change with the limited power machines coming on um at first people thought oh, limited power machines i think there was in those there's a limit of 500 rand for winnings and a small bet i think you couldn't bet more than i don't know what it was five rand or something so it was seen as a cinderella it wasn't going to really work and then they got a lot of traction and then you got electronic bingo terminals those become became seen as little mini casinos and then the casino industry thought wow these things are eating into our market share so they yeah they actually bought them all and um in fact they mostly owned by the big casino companies now but uh the onset of online gaming is very different very different Let's talk about online gaming as a disruptor because, of course, that's bringing a casino-like environment to a person's mobile phone. Yeah, so primarily it's been done by the sports betting companies or the, let's call it the, even the horse racing companies. The, the, yeah, so the, the old betting companies have got in, in on the action and they've done awfully well. I mean, you know, I, I'm not a massive gambler. I think I gamble enough in the stock market, so I don't think I can afford another vice. But, you know, just on social media, on my Twitter feed, on Facebook, there's a proliferation of adverts for, um, you know, Hollywood Bets and Lotto Star, Betway. Um, so there's a big marketing spend. So this is a, this is a big business. Um, you know, the stats, as you see in my story, are enormous. Um, you know, we've got a huge betting market. Um, and the gross gaming revenues are, are, are large as well. And this, this, the, the online gaming guys are getting the bulk of it. Um, and it's going to be very difficult to displace them. I estimate they must earn minimum 70, probably more like over 80% of that total market. Mm. There's not much of a pile left. These guys are spending big. Their marketing budgets are big. So it's a very easy industry to enter. I think anyone can do it. But you could have that marketing spend power. And if you haven't got it, you're probably going to fall over sometime. Um, so the smaller players, there are a lot of them around. I don't know how long they'll last. What's also interesting here, of course, is the number of JSC listed companies uh, that are plugged in here um, and that are actually enjoying a real returns uh, based on their investment. Let's touch on some of them, Mark. Yeah, look, I mean, obviously the big, the big ones are Sun and Togo. They are your primary go-to casino companies. You can't bet bet on um any of the other the online gaming companies uh you've got you've got um super group in the us if you want to go that route their own betway which operates here but otherwise you, you you've got togo and sun um sun is doing very well on the online space it's a late wake-up call but they're a, they're a brilliant gaming business everyone knows that they really are good they've been to all kinds of challenges they get through them and they do well they, they they're eating up market share but they're small I mean, I think their market share is less than 5%, uh, considerably less than 5%. I think they're aiming at, aiming at 10% in the long term. It'll make it very viable for them. But it is growing very fast. I mean, they're doubling, you know, it's like 50% growth every year. And I think their marketing spend is going up. Togo's a little bit further behind the curve, much smaller. But you can't write guys like Togo off. They're smart operators. Um, the smart money says that Togo might have to make an acquisition to play catch up. I think Sunny in the the good position of actually, you know, they're charring up market share and doing quite well. They seem to have momentum. Sogo might be a little bit too far behind. They might have to do a deal or two to kind of bulk up. So those are the two, you know, ones you can like look at um, at spending. I mean, I prefer to have shares in Hollywood bets at this moment, but they're not listed, unfortunately. Mm. There are some other small ones, but, uh, you know, those I think you just have to watch very carefully. I think if you're going to play, play the two big ones. 
Also interesting, though, Mark, is even though we see this uh, industry changing quite a bit or the sector uh, changing quite a bit, uh, brick and mortar casinos may still always have a place. Yeah, look, I, I think, to be honest, all the people I spoke to, um, no one's saying it's they, they're done for. Uh, I don't think that's true. What I do worry about, you can see in the results, the big casinos are doing well. Mm -hmm. um, you know, something like Suns, uh, Times Square, which they spent a lot of money on, it's doing well now. You know, even the Sun Coast, where people thought Sogo overspent, starting to do well. And so the big casinos are doing nasty. They're destinations. People go there. There's ice skating. There's whatever, you know, cinemas, restaurants, um, tent and bowling. You can have fun there. You can take the family. You don't have to gamble. So, yes, they do well, but people do still gamble there. People want to be, be there. Um, but, yeah, uh, <laughs> um, I don't know. Is destination enough to pull to to keep pulling people? It, it depends. They've got to keep investing in those casinos. That takes a lot. That takes a lot of money. Mm -hmm. So these are capital intensive businesses. Um, the small casinos. What do they do? I suspect, quite honestly, I'd be very very surprised if Sun holds onto all these small casinos, especially after the Piermont deal was there. Now they bought mm -hmm. Piermont, which is brings Emperor's Palace, another big casino. Yes, that's a good casino. It does very very well. But the, the whole lot of small casinos. I can't believe Sun will hold those. I think they'd rather sell those, reinvest in the big casinos, and also reinvest in, in the online gaming. That would be my bet if I was looking at them. Um, Togo, they've got some great casinos as well, some really nice ones, and they are spending. And there's a rumor that it's gonna, they're going to start up a Cape Town casino by moving one of the existing Western Cape licenses. That'll be a big spend. I mean, that's got to be a couple of billion, maybe four, five, six billion rand. That's a big bet. So also one to watch. And then, Mark, of course, there's always the social impact question of, uh, you know, gambling and people being able to, at any time, whip up their phone and make a bet and the likes. I'm wondering if that's at all playing into the conversation in markets. Of course, in society, these debates are constantly being had. But, uh, you know, is this being had uh, where uh, markets and listed companies are concerned? Look, I mean, you look at something like, something like let's just look at the sin sector in general. Mm. Uh, with its liquor, cigarettes, gambling, um, there's always a kickback by society about the, the ill effects of these things. Um, and, you know, you don't want to go into kind of an nanny state environment, but, you know, something like tobacco, uh, I feel very strongly about. I had a, a mother who smoked, would never stop. She was totally addicted. So I feel quite strongly about something like tobacco, but other people don't. But there's a balance. And I think um, gambling, uh, problematic gambling is ugly. I think you, you know, are remember my battery went flat in the Grand West parking lot when I went to an AGM and I had to wait for my battery to get charged up and I watched these people coming in and it's not people in Audis and you know Mercedes Benz it's people in all Toyota Corollas it's that's they you know they're spending money that they probably shouldn't be spending there you look at something like it you think hold how do you regulate against that you can only I suppose educate but I think if you've got a habit it's difficult to break so can you over-regulate the industry and that could be a, a impact on investment in the future? You know, depends. Yes, it is a very valid question you ask. Always straddling that line, uh, Mark. Uh, always a pleasure also speaking to you. Thank you so much for taking us through this fascinating sector today. That was Mark Hassenfuss, editor for The Financial Mail.